Singing is in the blood of the Welsh, and I began here at an early age, before taking to the West End stage. My singing career started in church, in the Good News Choir in Pembrokeshire, and this quaint chapel in my home village of Hayes Castle is one of my favourites. There's something about Pembrokeshire that draws people back. Today, for Songs of Praise, I've come to revisit the places of my childhood and meet people who've also returned to the land of their fathers and resettled back here in Wales. I meet a singing star who rediscovered her faith on her return to Wales, catch up with a man who literally has a cross to bear, fellow West End star John Owen Jones performs for us, and we have a wealth of wonderful Welsh hymns. I moved to Pembrokeshire when I was four. For me, growing up here, the beaches, coves and fields were my playground. Wales is, of course, the land of song. So today, all our music comes from Welsh artists, both old and new. Let's start with a Welsh classic, sung in Pembrokeshire's own cathedral at St David's. Guide me, O oh, thou great redeemer. has been home to a beach mission since 1956 when it was started by a local vicar, Reverend Norman Ellison. A young John Wellsby and his future wife Cherry joined Norman and took it over in 1978. I think I'm going to come and see if he wants some gold! Now it's the turn of daughter Robin and her generation to teach holidaymakers and their children about the Bible and its message. Robin, tell me, what does a giant tarantula 
have to do with telling stories of the Bible? Yes, well, this is Boris, the spider. And, um, he, he's in the Bible, right? <laughs> he's not in the Bible. But we do use him um, as part of our props for dramas and telling different stories and quizzes and all the fun things that we do on the beach um, with the kids and families in the summer. So sometimes we don't use Boris because he's a little bit scary for the younger ones. But we do have a lot of fun with, um, with using props. He's scary yeah, for me. <laughs> so tell me more about the beach missions. How long have you been involved with the beach missions in Saundersfoot? Oh, well... <laughs> Um, I suppose I've grown up with it really. So even when I was a baby, I was brought down to the beach um, to Did see you my wear dad one, doing one, that. one of these. <laughs> well, I'm sure I'm sure I was. I'm sure I was given equally embarrassing <laughs> things to, to be involved with. But um, no, um, I started being involved with them when, when I was 16, when I was old enough. So yeah, it was very influential in my growing up years because every summer we'd have an influx of people who'd. Um, you know, whose lives have been changed by the love of God and who wanted to share it. So it was exciting. We were in school at the same time, weren't we? I believe we were. Mm. And I remember your face from around town because uh, we had a, a Christian bookshop mm -hmm. in Half West, which I believe is still there. It is, yes. That was started way back with um, Reverend Ellison in his house and then it developed into a, um, a, sto a stall in the market and from there, um, a shop in town. Robin trained to be a music teacher and taught at a school in India for three years. But she soon realised she also wanted to teach children about God. The Lord opened the way for me to study theology um, for two years in Hertfordshire at All Nations Christian College. Um, and I'm enjoying doing two things that I really love. One is music teaching um, in your old school. Oh, really? <laughs> and, yeah, and uh, the other is doing um, a programme called Bible Explorer, which is going into primary schools and is um, telling Bible stories. And it's a real privilege to do it because this, those stories have been you know the foundations of my life and it's lovely to be able to pass them on.
Freshwater West is used to unusual sights. When I was 12, I made a music video here as part of the Good News Choir. It's also a popular location for Hollywood films. It's been featured in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows and in Robin Hood. But at Easter time, it witnessed a seasonal but strange sight. For the past two Easters, Andy Garrett and Jonathan Baharrell have walked along the coastal path here, carrying a seven-foot cross made out of driftwood collected from the beach. Last year we did it as a prayerful witness to open doors um, and the persecuted church, and this year we did it for SASRA, the Soldiers and Airmen Scripture Reading Association, um, prayerfully considering those suffering from um, post-traumatic stress disorder, how long did you walk for? Last year we walked for 24 hours. Wow. Um, and this year, thankfully, we did it a bit shorter. <laughs> at about five and a half hours, six hours, um, about 15 miles. Jonathan, what was the reaction like from those that you met? For the majority of the time, it was very positive. But we do remember, and the scriptures tell us this, that the cross is a stumbling block for those who struggle to believe. And although we do not set out to provoke a reaction, we are aware that the cross will provoke a reaction. Are you encouraging others to walk with you? We are indeed, Connie, and others have joined us for a short time, concerned to know what it's all about. Not 24 hours though, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's yet to happen.